What's up, FBCO students? How are we doing tonight? It's Wednesday. We are so excited for worship, the message from Taylor. But first, but first, we have to hear from these students. We have Jacob Wood and Gavin Jones with us. What's going on, fellas? What's up? Y'all doing good? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You? Very talkative. Very talkative. Well, hey, <laughs> listen. Let's do some questions um, just, just for the sake of informing students and just telling everybody what's been going on in your life. What have you been doing since school is now online? Jacob, start us off, man. Um, mainly since school's been online, mainly just getting caught up in work because I've been caught up in a lot of work and I have a lot of work to do and probably – also, just getting my shots up for basketball, getting ready for tryouts. Oh, yeah. And, That's what I like to hear, man. And just playing Xbox. Yeah, man. yeah, getting some shots up and playing Xbox. Love that. That's good stuff. What about you, Gavin? Um, I've been doing a lot of school. Okay. I, like, I take my dogs out at walks, but most of it's just been, like, hanging out with my family. Yeah, yeah. I've probably exercised more than I can even imagine. Uh, I've walked. I've ran. Um, I, I've been a huge disc golf fanatic right now, and so uh, it's been, it's been real enjoyable. But also at the same time, you know, God's still working. God's still working through me, and just what I've been spending my time doing, and so much. Um, and so it's reading the Word and diving in and just praising Him. You know, give Him the glory in this season that we're in. But Jacob, how about you start us off with, you know, what what scripture has really been on your heart? that you and your family or just maybe even you yourself have been, you know, looking at, going towards, and just praying to God over? Mainly my verse that I've been, like, or that I've, had like, stuck in my mind is, like, Philippians 4.13. Hmm. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Because, like, a lot of my verses, I mean, a lot of the, my schoolwork that I do is, like, I'm really behind in. And I get, like, over-frustrated that I can't do it and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And has that helped you out online at all, just kind of, like, sitting there doing your own pace? And so, mm -hmm. yeah, for sure. I, I think college is a huge help for that as well, you know. Yeah. You're still stressing, but, you know, that time management is key in college. Um, so, you'll, you'll see that as you move up to high school and then college. Gavin, what about yourself, man? What scripture have you been um, looking towards or verse or – um, I've been looking towards Second Corinthians four eight, and it says, "We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed; perplexed, but not driven in despair; persecuted, but not forsaken; struck down, but not destroyed." And I think that's a good verse because it's like telling you to persevere through this time. Hmm. That's good. And in this time, fellas, this is just the last thing. We'll wrap it up and we'll shoot it over to Trace uh, for worship. But really, what has God taught both of you, you know, just in this time, just kind of for me, it's been just to settle and just say, hey, God, this is your life. You're in control. I can't control this, but you can. So I'm just going to continue to walk alongside of you, continue to pray and do everything in my power just to say to stay faithful uh, in what he's called me to do. And that's just be a servant of him. So, so Jacob, we'll start with you on this. What is God teaching you through this time? Well, God's teaching me a lot of things, but mainly he's been teaching me, like, that I need to get more in the word because mm, yeah. I haven't been doing that lately. So that's, like, one of the things that he's been teaching me. Yeah, that's awesome, man. That's good. Gavin, what about yourself? Uh, patience because, like, I have a lot of schoolwork, and it just, like, overwhelms me. I feel like I just he's teaching me to like take it slowly. Yeah, that's great, man. P patience and staying in the scriptures that'll do it uh, for sure. And you know, God's with us. Don't forget that, fellas. God is right there in the midst of everything, and so um, we're just we're so thankful that He is a good Father, and you know we, we serve Him every day. And so just continue loving Him. Uh, we appreciate y'all. We, we appreciate having y'all on here. Um, but now. I'm about to send it over to Trace, and right before he kicks it off with awesome worship and then Tay does her message, we want you to comment, tell us where you're watching, who's watching, and we're going to go live at 8 p.m. on Insta Live. So that's right, 8 p.m., Insta Live, comment where you're watching from, 
continue to say hello, and we're going to have an awesome night of worship. So, Trace, over to you, man. Thank you, Jacob, for that. Uh, so excited to worship with you guys today. Um, this first song we're going to do is called Sea of Victory, um, and I think it's such a cool song. It says, I'm going to see the victory for the battle belongs to you. Um, and I think that's a really great reminder to us right now uh, with what we're going through, that, that the battle is happening, but the war has already been won. Um, and that's a huge thing that we should be excited and full of praise for. Um, we are seeing victories happen all around us right now. I even look back at Easter last week. Um, it was reported that over 65,000 people made first-time decisions to follow Christ. And that's something huge. Um, and we should be so excited about that and, and the revival that is coming after this. Um, my encouragement to you for this week is to find the little victories in life. I think John Krasinski um, and his SGN network is doing a great job um, at just reporting what good is happening right now. And I think we need to remember that. Um, and we have a lot of good and a lot to be full of praise for. So let's sing about that right now. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. Oh, my God will never fail. Oh,
In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. So I When I trust in you, don't need to understand. Make me a vessel, make me an offering, make me whatever you want me to be. Though I came here with nothing, but all you have given me. Jesus, bring new wine out of me. In the crushing, in the pressing, you are making new wine. In the soil, I now surrender. You are breaking new ground. You are making new ground. Oh, make me a vessel. Make me an offering. Make me whatever you want me to be. But I came here with nothing. But oh, you. help us to focus on you in a time that is so unknown in a time that is so unideal Jesus we just pray that you would bring our thoughts and our hearts back to you Father I pray for Taylor as she brings the message I pray that it would be straight from you I pray for hearts and minds and living rooms across East Alabama God I pray that we all would be able to focus on what you have to say for just a little bit. God, we give you this time. We give you all the glory. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Hey, guys. We're so glad that you're joining us for Wednesday Night Worship. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we miss you guys. And it's we're so thankful that technology connects us, although we are apart. Um, so tonight, I just wanted to share a few things that the Lord's been teaching me. Um, he's teaching me so many things throughout this quarantine season. He's teaching me 
um, a lot about what endurance means, um, how to run the race with endurance to have a marathon mentality, um, not just a sprint mentality, that he's teaching me how to persevere and what it looks like to endure and to walk with endurance. Um, he's teaching me a lot about um, my desperate need for him, that I cannot do anything on my own power and my own strength, that I, I truly need him. Um, he's teaching me um, so much about um, that he is the only unchanging thing, um, that while so many things change, um, it feels like things in our world change weekly um, or get modified or canceled or edited, he's the only thing that is unchanging. And so I'm resting in that, but then also he's really been teaching me about um, the transformation and the renewing of my mind and how important it is for me to be dwelling on things that are true. And so um, I just wanted to kind of walk you guys through some scripture and, and even just a few practical ways that we can leave tonight and um, walk in truth and realize that um, we have um, weapons to fight um, the enemy with and that we can be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so um, it's been said before that the battle between your ears is how you win at life, meaning the mind is so important. Um, I don't know if you knew this, but um, the average human has over 30,000 thoughts in a day. So 30,000 times there are little thoughts just going through our, our mind at all times throughout the day. Um, and so many of those thoughts, I believe, even in this season, um, can quickly spiral to thoughts of anxiety, of depression, of laziness, of fear, of worry, of frustration, um, of exhaustion, of doubt. And so I believe we need now more than ever need to be combating these thoughts um, and recognizing that we need to equip ourselves um, to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And so um, Romans 12, 1 through 2, talk about um, just this exactly. And um, while these are verses that we um, recognize um, and probably have heard before, it says, therefore I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Um, those same verses um, in a different version, in the message version, are really interesting to read. Um, and I just think this different perspective um, can help resonate something in our hearts. But it says, so here's what I want you to do, God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, your sleeping, eating, going to work, and walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Um, I believe these two verses in Romans show us that God knew that we needed the capacity to renew our minds. So he gave us the ability to do it. Um, I think um, a few things that, that the Lord's been teaching me through his word. Um, I, I recently read a book even um, called Get Out of Your Head, and it really camps out on um, just what it looks like to um, to, to replace thoughts with with truth. Um, it's called Get Out of Your Head by Jenny Allen. So if you need a book for quarantine season, check it out. Um, but also there's um, a neuroscientist named Dr. Caroline Leaf. Um, she is a cognitive neuroscientist who studied the brain for over 30 years. Um, Dr. Leaf is actually also a believer in Jesus Christ. And so she takes what scripture says, but also takes the study that she's spent um, learning what the brain is all about and has kind of combined these things to walk in one single truth of saying that our minds are so critical um, to for us to be putting in not just good, positive, happy thoughts, but to be putting truth and unchanging um, good things in our mind so that we would dwell on that and that ends up reflecting and shaping our lives. So um, just some things that Dr. Caroline Leaf has has taught me through some videos I've watched on her. Um, she, she mentions that the mind is separate from the brain, which I think is interesting, that we can be putting thoughts in our mind, which end up linking and transforming our brain to, to be who we are. Um, 
she says oh, the brain is so complex that we really, even the, the smartest neuroscientists um, only really know about how 8% of the brain works. So how complex um, God has created that to be something so small in our head is so complex and, and so unfathomable. But um, the way that we direct our attention changes the nature to our biology. Like I said, um, the things that we're directing our attention on, the things that we're dwelling on can end up changing the nature of who we become. Um, and so I think that when we consistently choose to direct our attention um, to something like habitually, um, you've probably heard that 21 days creates a habit. When we are continuously and habitually turning our minds to um, things that are good and holy, then that begins to, to take shape. And just in the opposite way, when we're consistently putting kind of what goes in, what comes out, like if we're consistently putting trash or untruth or anxiety or worry or fear in, then that's kind of what's coming out of our lives. And so um, we can basically redesign how our brain works by pulling out toxic thoughts and replacing it with truth. So um, I truly believe that God's desire is for us to get out of our head and to step into a life of freedom that is for his glory and his renown. And so um, 2 Timothy um, chapter 1, verse 7 says, um, for God gave us for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. So God has created us to be fearless, that he has not given us a spirit of fear. He's given us a spirit of power and of love and, and self-discipline. That is so empowering to hear that he has given us a spirit to be courageous, um, to be fighters, and to be people who um, choose to dwell on, on good things. And um, Psalm 145 verse 18 says, The Lord is near to all who call on him. Um, I know for me in these days, but just in general, it's just comforting to know that the Lord is near, um, that when his children call on him, he's not only listening, but he's right by us. Um, so let's talk through just three super simple um, ways to renew our minds. Um, this is through scripture, but um, just some practical things that we can take away and, and walk in um, recognizing that. Um, the transformation and the renewing of our minds is critical, not just um, in this season of, of, of so much uncertainty and, and fear and um, anxiety, but as believers, we must um, be equipping ourselves with truth. So the first thing that I think is the obvious um, step is that we must capture our toxic thoughts. Um, so think like if you are with a lasso trying to wrangle a horse or a bull or whatever it is with this lasso, you're trying to capture it, right? You're trying to grab a hold of it and rein it back in. And so we're trying to capture these toxic thoughts, which means we have to first recognize these thoughts are toxic. They're not from the Lord. They don't reflect his character. So recognizing that the thoughts are toxic, but then capturing them and saying, no, I'm going to replace my worry with worship. And in saying that there is so much that praise can be my weapon, that when I adore God and when I worship him and recognize who he is, that that is my weapon to fight against that. Um, I love Philippians 4, um, verses 4 through 8. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. So when we capture our toxic thoughts, I think it's so cool that scripture lists things that we should be dwelling and thinking on. Um, so we capture these thoughts but then, secondly, we have to replace them with truth. Um, we would be foolish to think that, okay, all I have to do is recognize, yeah, I'm having an anxious spirit today. Or, yeah, I'm having a um, doubtful heart. Or, today, I'm walking in fear. And just recognizing that is not the thing that, that dissolves or, or um, deletes um, these thoughts from our mind. Not only do we have to recognize it but, and capture it, we must replace it. It's kind of like when you delete something, something else has to go in its place. Well, when we, when we delete these toxic thoughts, we must replace it with truth. 
Um, and so instead of you're opening your cell phone to a text or a news app or Instagram first thing in the morning, why don't we replace our thoughts in that first moment that we're awake with scripture? Um, when I mean, I think a practical way for us to replace things, our minds with truth um, is, is by putting scripture and truth all around us, um, whether it's um, it's a, a verse on our, our mirror, on our door, on our in our car, wherever we're going to see it, um, or even our lock screen, just, just replacing our minds with truth. I love that the Bible app has a daily um, verse of the day that pops up and says, check, check out what the verse of the day is. It's just replacing our minds with truth. Um, I think it's really hard for anxious thoughts to camp out in our mind when we are being super thankful or super worshipful. So when we're replacing these thoughts with, with truth, with worship, with thankfulness, um, there's no room in our heart or our head for things that are toxic or things that are untrue. So I think when we remember what God has done for us and remember who he is um, and even speaking those things out, I know some of you guys have um, kind of taken to journaling throughout this quarantine season. I've, I've seen pictures of y'all's journals, of ways that you have written out specific blessings in your life, specific things that you're thankful for. And I think that that is powerful and it totally goes against what the enemy wants. And, and you are claiming these truths and these blessings that God has given you. And so when we're full of gratitude and gratefulness and thankfulness, um, it, our heart would not retreat towards anxiety and worry and fear. So like I said, we capture our toxic thoughts. We replace those thoughts with true things, but then we need to recognize that we have a choice. Um, I think that this has been just so beneficial for me to recognize that I do have the choice to tra be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Um, that I do have um, the ability to, to think and dwell on things that are true and noble and good. Um, so I'm not a victim to my thoughts. That I'm not... A, a victim to the thing that enters my brain and, and can't camp out unless I allow it to. And so um, what is taking, what's taking space in my mind is the only thing that I can um, allow it to. So God has given us control over our minds. And I think that it's so important for our mind that we need to let our mind inform our mouth. So what we believe, we must claim it. If we believe that God is good and we believe that he is in control and sovereign, we must speak that, right? That we must speak it out loud, write it down. God, I believe you're in control. God, I don't know what's going on around me, but I believe that you are good and that you are who you say you are. So that we're claiming those things, but then also we need to let our mind and our heart hear what our mouth is saying. So it's basically this cycle of putting in thoughts that are true, speaking them out, but then reminding and encouraging ourselves with that truth. Um, I wanted to read you a quick excerpt from this book that I, that I told you about. Um, Get Out of Your Head is what it's called. And um, just a perfect... Um, way um, of just a reminder that we do have a choice. It says, um, when we're spiraling in noise or distractedness, we have a choice to shift our minds back to God through stillness. When we're spiraling in isolation, we have a choice to shift our minds back to God through community. When we're spiraling in anxiety, we have a choice to shift our minds back to God through trust. When we're spiraling in cynicism, we have the choice to shift our minds back to God through worship. When we're spiraling in self-importance, we have the choice to shift our minds back to God through humility. When we're spiraling in victimhood, when the enemy wants to make us believe that he has a, a grip on our hearts, um, we have a choice to shift our minds back to God through gratitude. And when we're spiraling in complacency, we have a choice to shift our minds back to God through serving him and serving others. I just thought that was beautiful, that, that we have a choice, that it is... Um, it's the ball is in our court to, to allow what our heart and our minds believe. And so um, just in closing, we're about to continue worshiping tonight, but um, this song that we're about to sing closes with an old hymn that I think is so powerful and honestly sums up everything that we just talked about um, in, in one, um, in a, just a few verses. Um, and it says, the lyrics say, um, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. And so just thinking about that, of the more that I turn my eyes to Jesus, the more that I 
put my gaze and, and lock my eyes on him, he's becoming brighter and he's illuminating my life so much that the things around me become dimmer and dimmer. Um, I was talking to a student the other day and she was just encouraging me by saying like, man, I'm so thankful for this quarantine. It's, it's giving me an opportunity to recognize that God is who he says he is. And it's given me time to realize that I need him. And I think just hearing her say that reminded me that yes, when we turn our eyes on Jesus, we realize that he is worth it. He is good. And he is the only thing that we can put our trust in. Um, and the things around us that are, that are constantly changing or, or disappointing or scary um, grow strangely dim um, because in the light of his glory and his grace, that is the thing that's lighting our lives up. And so students, we want you to experience God's grace. We want you to experience the freedom and the forgiveness that only Jesus offers. Um, he offers us this gift that is free. We just have to take it. Um, when I was thinking about how God's gift is free and, and just benefiting from his good gift, um, I was, it reminded me of a, a couple of Christmases ago. I got my parents um, a ring doorbell um, set. So may, many of you might have a ring doorbell um, on your front door that it, it links to an app and it notifies you if somebody's on your front porch or whatever. Um, and so I thought, they're going to love this. This will be such a great gift. Got that for them. They never installed it. And so I would always joke with them. Anytime I would come home, I'd be like, why is the ring doorbell not still not installed? And they'd be like, oh, we just haven't gotten around to it. We haven't gotten around to it. And, you know, a few months pass. I'm like, wow, I'm really glad to see that y'all have not utilized the gift I got you for Christmas. And the ring doorbell is still in the drawer and not on the front door. And they're like, we just need to get it. We just need to go ahead and just do it. We'll do that this weekend. And it just kept month after month. Well, a full year later, a Christmas later, I was joking. I said, I should have just rewrapped the ring doorbell and put that back under the tree because you still haven't used it. And they're like, you know what? We're going to get out this weekend and we're going to do it. So we install it. And this becomes one of their favorite things. They love seeing, oh, there's a motion at your front door that somebody dropped off a package or a neighbor just came by or the dog's in the front yard. What's going on? And so they love this gift and they would have benefited from it immediately if they would have just taken it and used it. So a good gift doesn't do us any good unless we take it, right? And so thinking about this, I think that God is, um, he's just saying, child, I want you to experience freedom. I want you to experience freedom from your guilt, from your shame, from your anxiety, from your sadness, from your hopelessness. I want to free you from yourself. And I want you to get out of your head and I want you to begin replacing your thoughts with things that are true and noble and lovely and praiseworthy. And that his grace is a gift that you just have to receive and you just have to take. It does you no good unless you accept it. And so if you want um, to talk more about what that looks like for your life, or if you are just needing um, somebody to process things with, of uh, what does it look like to renew our minds? What does it look like to walk in the transformation of the renewing of our minds? Then we're going to have some numbers um, on the screen where you can, um, you can text us, um, me, Dan, or Jacob. Um, our student team would love to walk you through what this looks like for your life. And as we continue worshiping, guys, I want us to um, recognize that um, we have a choice. Um, we have a choice to turn our eyes up and not at ourselves or not at the world around us to just look up and see that he is good. And um, that when we turn our eyes to him, um, the things around us grow strangely dim. And so I hope that that leaves you with some hope and some encouragement um, as it is encouraging me as God's word is alive and active. Let me pray for us and we're going to continue worshiping. God, thank you for your truth. Um, thank you for giving us a choice to renew our minds. Um, thank you for um, giving us um, equipment like your word and your spirit um, and your presence to fill our minds and our lives with truth. We love you, Lord, and we thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hey, thanks so much for that truth and humbling reminder. Um, I just wanted to close out with a song that I think just really brings all of that together. And I pray that as we worship that you would continue to resonate on the message that Tay just gave and continue to keep that mentality of just drawing near to him and letting all else fade away.
not in it, then I don't want it, and let all else fade away, and take the whole world, and give me Jesus, and let all else fade away. Wow, Jamin, man, thank you so much for leading us. It was so good to get your face back on the Zoom screen. We haven't heard your pretty voice in a few weeks, but thank you yes. for leading us in worship tonight. And Tay, 
and Trace. Guys, thank you so much for leading us so well. Today with the awesome reminder that we do have a choice even in this time is anxiety and thoughts and um, all these sinful desires can like flood our brain. We do have a choice to, to follow Christ and make those thoughts submit to him instead of just dwelling in our anxieties. What a gracious God we serve for him to give us that choice to follow him instead of basking that. So that was awesome. Thank you guys for that encouragement tonight. Yeah, and thank you, Jacob and uh, Gavin and Jacob for um, just leading us off with just some cool ways that y'all are um, going through this quarantine, um, just the ways that God is moving in your lives. And cool, so cool to hear how um, it's just so important that we um, have the patience to come to the Lord and that we stay um, in his word. Thank y'all for that. Yeah, pretty cool to have some middle school guys lead us off. So that's awesome. Hey, um, just a reminder, they, they mentioned at the beginning of the, um, the service tonight that we have a giveaway tonight uh, live on Instagram, 8 o'clock. Uh, check it out. We're going to be hooking you up with an awesome student ministry blanket. Uh, it's going to be super cool. We're going to be giving away. Uh, so that's going to be great. Uh, so if you have not yet commented tonight, uh, go ahead and do that. Uh, let us know that you're here, that you've joined us for worship tonight. Uh, give us a quick hello, how you doing, comment, uh, so we can hear from you. And then we're going to be doing a drawing tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, so jump in over on Instagram here in a few minutes and be with us, and we're going to have a giveaway. So uh, Owen, Jimbo, good to see your lovely faces this evening. Uh, so always. thanks for being with us. So we have a chance to wrap up the service. So hey, students, families, we love you guys. Y'all have an awesome night. Comment and see you at 8 o'clock on Instagram. Bye, guys. See y'all.